Okay, so now let's explore the um, elimination method. And again, this is also called the addition method. The reason why it's also called the addition method is because that's really what we do. We eliminate a variable between our two equations by using addition. So we can call it elimination because that's our goal is to eliminate one of the variables temporarily, or we can call it addition because that's the actual technique involved. So let's look at this system. We have x minus y equals 5, and the other one is 2x plus y equals 16. So again, our goal here is to find an ordered pair solution that will solve both of these equations. Okay, um, notice that both of these are in standard form. They need to be that way, where you have all your variables on one side and the numbers on the other. In addition, you need to have your x's line up and your y's line up, or else this just won't work. Our goal here is to add these two equations together in such a way that one of the variables goes away. And as you see, if I add these two equations together, since negative y and positive y are additive opposites of each other, one's negative, one's positive, but they're both y, if I add them together, the y's will go away, which is our goal. So let's do this. We have x plus 2x is 3x. Negative y plus y, well, those cancel. That was our goal. And this is equal to 21. To solve this, you just divide by 3, and you get x equals 7. Now, unlike the substitution method, we don't have an easy one to plug it into, so just plug x equals 7 into either equation, because remember, our ordered pair solution should work for both. So I'll just plug it into the uh, second equation. And again, my choice doesn't really matter, and so I'll get 2 times 7 plus y is equal to 16. So to solve this for y, we get 14 plus y equals 16, or in other words, y would be equal to 2 if I just subtract 14 from both sides. Okay, now we can, um, well, that's actually our answer. So we have x equals 7, y equals 2. So together, our solution would just be 7 comma 2. Okay, so for this one, our next example, we have, sorry, we have 3x, minus 2y equals negative 8, and we have negative 2x plus 3y equals 7. Okay, so again, our goal for the elimination method is to add these two equations together in such a way that one of the variables goes away. But if I add these together, I'm going to get x, because 3x minus 2x is just x, and then I'm going to get y plus y, which because negative 2y plus 3y is just y, and I'll get negative 1 on the right-hand side. That doesn't help us because we still have two uh, variables in there. So what I need to do is I need to multiply both of these equations by something, maybe a different thing for each equation, um, so that one of the variables goes away. So let's do that. Um, let's say I decide I want to so just pick a variable you want to eliminate. Let's say I want to eliminate the y's. So because I want to eliminate the y's, um, I need it to be so that So looking at my y's here, I need it to be such that these are going to be additive opposites of each other. So what you need to do, remember how you found the least common denominator? You try to find basically a number that um, is a multiple of both of your denominators. Same idea, only we're trying to find the least common multiple. So we have the numbers 2 and 3. We want to find a number that both of these numbers are factors of, that is a multiple of both of these numbers. So uh, let's see, 2 and 3, both of those numbers are factors of 6. In other words, 6 is a multiple of both 2 and 3. 2 times 3 is 6. So we want both of these coefficients to be 6. One to be negative 6, one to be positive 6. So therefore, when I add them, they'll go away. Well, that's pretty easy. If I do 2 times 3, I'll get 6. And if I do 3 times 2, I'll get 6. So I just need to multiply the whole first equation by 3. So I'm just going to multiply this whole first equation by 3. And of course, whatever you do on the left-hand side, you need to do on the right. And on the second equation, I'm going to multiply it by 2. Okay, and now let's rewrite those two equations, because that's obviously very sloppy. 
So rewriting these equations, I'll distribute my 3, and I get 9x, well, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6y, equals negative 24. My second equation, 2 times negative 2, that's negative 4x, 2 times 3 is negative 6y, and notice my y's are opposites of each other, equals 14. Now when we add the equations together, the y's will cancel. So 9 minus 4, that's just going to be 5x. The y's cancel, that's our goal. And negative 24 plus 14 gives you negative 10. Now we can divide both sides by 5, and we get x equals negative 2. Well, just like before, we want to solve for y also, because we need to find an order pair that solves for both. Plug negative 2 in for x for either equation, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to use the second equation, but again, it doesn't matter. So our second equation was negative 2x plus 3y equals 7. I'm using my original equations instead of my um, equations after I multiplied them by numbers, because if you think about it, the second set of equations are much larger so the, the coefficient. So why do that? Just use the original ones. Okay, um, so I said I wanted to plug in negative 2 for x, so I have minus 2 times negative 2, because that's the value for x we found, plus 3y equals 7. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, plus 3y equals 7. Subtract 4 from both sides, and we get 3y equals 3. Divide by 3, we get y equals 1. Okay, so putting these two together, we have that x is negative 2 and y is 1. And that is our solution. Okay, our next problem. Again, we're going to use the substitution, the, uh, sorry, the addition method or elimination method to solve this. We have 2x plus 7y equals 3. Our next line is 4x, sorry, 4x plus 14y equals 1. Okay, so I want to find, um, I want to add these two equations together in such a way that one of the variables goes away. Let's say I decide to, I want to eliminate my x's. So to do that, I could just multiply the first equation by negative 2, since negative 2 times positive 2 gives me negative 4. So negative 4x plus 4x would give you 0x. So that works. So let's do that. Let's multiply the first equation by negative 2. And again, we have to do it to both sides. Be very careful about that. And then let's rewrite our equations. So rewriting our equations, we get negative 4x minus 14y equals negative 6. And our second equation this time didn't change at all. We didn't have to change it because our least common multiple was 4. Adding these two equations together, negative 4x plus 4x gives you 0. Negative 14y plus 14y, well, that also gives you 0. So this whole left-hand side is 0. The right-hand side, negative 6 plus 1, gives you negative 5. All right, so this is kind of a problem. Our variables went away, and not only that, we got a false statement. 0 does not equal negative 5. And again, this is false. Whenever you wind up with something where like your, your variables went away and you just wind up with like 0 equals 0 or 0 equals negative 5, you have to ask yourself, does the result make sense? I mean, is the result true or false? In this case, the result is false. If the result is false, the answer will just be no solution. If the answer is true, then there's going to be an infinite number of solutions. This last problem asks us to solve by graphing. We could use any other method as well. Elimination would actually work really well here. Um, but just to demonstrate the graphing technique, we're going to use graphing. So let's start this off. To start it off, um, we need to plot each of these lines. So let's first look at the first one and try to plot it. Um, that's a little messy. Let me try to circle that a little nicer. All right. Anyway, so we want to plot it. Um, you could solve for y and use the slope-intercept form to graph this. Honestly, since they're both in standard form, it would be much easier just to find the intercepts. So let's do that. So let me just create a table. 
And remember, the y-intercept is when x is 0, and the x-intercept is when y is 0. So let's just plug in 0 for x, and we get 2 times 0, which is, of course, 0, minus y equals 4. Dividing both sides by negative 1, we get y is equal to negative 4. All right, so now um, let's try to plug in 0 into that first equation for y, and we get 2x minus y, which, again, no, not minus y, minus 0, rather, which, of course, that you don't need to write that, equals 4. Divide both sides by 2, we get x equals 2. So now we have to graph this. So we have, um, we're just going to graph our intercepts. Our y-intercept is negative 4, um, or 0 comma negative 4. So that's down here. And our x-intercept is 2 comma 0, which is over here. We want to connect these with a straight line. And that looks about right. Okay. Next, let's try to do the same with the other one. So for our second set of equations, we have x plus y equals 2. So again, I'm just going to use, since it's in standard form, just try to find the intercepts. All right, um, let's see here. When x is 0, y would just be 2. And when y is 0, x would just be 2. That was pretty straightforward. Let's plot each of those points. So we have one point at 2 comma 0. Oops, that's a little messy. Let me see if I can do a little better there. All right. And another point at, sorry, that was 0 comma 2. That's the y-intercept. And another point at 2 comma 0, the x-intercept. So let's plot these. Let's connect these with a straight line. about right. Okay, so we see our solution. The point where they both um, intersect is right over here. And that point is 2 comma 0. It happens to be our x-intercept, so that's the solution. 2 comma 0 is the solution. It's where our two graphs overlap or intersect.